So we're using this uh, electrical water pump, which is gonna sit um, where the original tank normally sat. And we're using this rubber, um, which is the original rubber that I still had. I still found one because on this car, they kind of close it off. So back at it, the final part of the Raymond radiator on the E46 supercharged. We have the coolant sensor for the regulator hooked up over here in the outflow port. That's the um, circuit breakers or fuses for the um, both of the rear fans. And there you can see the tubes coming down. And that's where um, they're being clamped with a hose for the uh, electric water pump that's going to be sitting under there there we've put some rift nuts in and we made uh, a new uh, ground bolt where we can ground everything because the wires from the fans are going to come in right between over there and we're going to route them all the way to here and um, the regulator for the fans is going to have a ground and it's going to ground it um, to that bolt so it needs to be really strong um, yeah, this is the little lid that we're going to put over there and it's going to take the um, rubber grommet that we uh, made uh, or like we didn't really make it but the, the rubber grommet that's always going to be in there because it's the same rubber grommet as over there but now we're going to be using it to put the, the, the plug of the electric water pump through there as you guys may all have seen. We're going for the solution where we have drilled two holes over here and these AN lines are going to be connected to two uh, tubes. Here this um, setup is so we can run an AN cooler in line. So here we made an adapter that's going to take an AN to the oil filter housing um, and it's basically running to the oil cooler over here and that's going to return over there and return like that the whole reason for that is that there's no way to detach these hoses down there without removing the motor so i'm sure there are some adapters to adapt those hoses to an but it will require us to remove the entire engine here you can see that we put one of the an lines here and the other one is sitting over here um, on this uh, piece that we modified um, so that's basically how that's gonna run and it's the tubing that goes under the car pretty big piece of course um, we welded those plates in between there so um, we can uh, attach those bolts over there and these are the pipes that are gonna stick through that area of the hood it's gonna have a hose over like the AN fitting over there and the silicone hose over there we made some vents for the rear um, exit of the air over here Peter did that over here super nice job like a lot of you guys know this style because it's always on my cars so we use a little bit of the bigger um, it's plastic uh, mesh which I really like and we always have the trick where we use like the round edges makes it look a little bit nicer um, so yeah, that should be sufficient because on my sedan car, it's only these sides. Uh, we don't have this done on my sedan car and it's perfectly cool and has exact same fans. So no problems expected over there. Adding some brackets for the oil cooler. So over here I uh, machined, there's one over there too. I machined um, a bushing, which is held on over here. With a little bolt and that way you can screw it in from underneath and there's two other braces over there we're going to be putting a oil cooler in here because this car um, was uh, on uh, ethanol before and uh, now it's going to be on pump gas here you can see the setup here this is just a clamp we don't need anymore the setup over here with the am lines and here you can see how we ended up setting up that adapter so those uh, allens are bolted in there a little p-clip with a bolt 
that um, keeps that hose in place. And the other hose is right over there. So this is going to be like you can see like all the packaging problems that we have so this is where the two tubes are going to the um, floor area of course we still need to be able to reach like these brake reservoirs and all this stuff so this is all like very very difficult packaging um so we're gonna place this in a little different location over here we also have the oil pressure sensor right there there's also a drain so it's like so much stuff that you need to uh, take care of so it can never sit in the same position anymore, but we'll make something, we'll make it work somehow. Um, yeah, and um, as we said before, we put this um, wastegate, it's used uh, to control the boost. We put it in a different location here. We have like hoses, like you don't really have much choice. You just gotta do something like this uh, to route those hoses. And it's also important that they have a nice fluent uh, line uh, fluent trajectory so yeah I'm kind of happy with how it turned out and you don't want to like put, so people say like, why don't you weld like an AN piece on here but it's like half a day work to take off the water pump because there's a galley in the back um, and the gallery is actually um, connecting all kinds of other parts of the water system over there and you need to take that off um, well basically you need to take all that stuff off to get there because that's where one of these pipes um, goes to each of those gallery areas so like th just taking off this water pump isn't as simple as it seems so just welding a little thing on there also doesn't make much sense also if you would ever fail a water pump which happens on these cars this isn't like the newest one then we have to re-weld it again so i opted to use this uh, hose um, and then put the an over here um, so yeah that's how it ended up like can't do everything perfectly especially with these uh, constraints with all the um basically what you could call uh, the, the real estate like the space under the hood um, that's like kind of like limiting us with a lot of things but i think um so far we've done a pretty good job getting everything done and it looks uh it looks nice and neat so let me know what you guys think and there you can see the oil cooler in place um lines are running through here tie them together and that's um where it's gonna sit so that's pretty nice like i kept it a little bit to that side and the reason for that is that i'm a little suspicious about this air filter which seems a little bit small because i'm kind of thinking that this car should easily make 600 650 probably even more and i think it needs a little bit bigger air filter for that um, so we kind of like kept it a little bit in line with the power steering cooler so we could eventually move to like a larger air filter that's ducking around the corner like that um, yeah so the engine bay is kind of like shaping up it's a good thing I checked the power steering fluid because it was empty not really good over there and now you can see like just the way I like it there's very little overlap with these cooling components so the oil cooler sits a little higher than the intercooler um, really nice setup, like very similar to how I have it in my car or in my sedan car, basically. Um, yeah, power steering cooler over there, so it's blocking the intercooler a little bit, but only like marginally. Uh, we didn't install that at all, of course. Um, put this uh, vacuum hose back there, so now we have a lot of space. I kind of, before I put the intake on, I kind of want to run the electrical water pump to see if we've got no coolant leaks or none of that stuff going on so that's what we're going to be doing uh, right now so we relocated this bracket over here machined some uh, steel spacers um, and like space that thing out it needed to go in because the hood is uh, the low in that area and you can see it's kind of nice um, everything is really close so you guys can tell it's a little dark uh, everything is really close in this engine bay, but it's still like serviceable and if you need to do something with the filter It's only like those two bolts uh, That easily come off and I use an aluminum plate so it has a little bit of suspension and movement and stuff um, so yeah And it's about as good as I can get it um, with this kind of uh, setup And it's the tubing under the car um, there we run the electric water pump 
set up and I stuck that piece out there a little bit to shield it from the exhaust and uh, yeah that's uh, our idea of the um, floor for this car so there you can see the electric water pump lines coming in there and there's a setup we've just filled it for the first time and um, no, it doesn't seem to be leaking it's all looking pretty good I'm gonna leave it overnight and there you can see the sensor for the um, control system uh, of the fans and yeah no leaks anywhere it's getting quite late but um, another view there and no all leaks over there obviously the thermostat hasn't opened yet so it doesn't really say much we filled up this reservoir as well so um, yeah it's starting to look good tomorrow we're gonna do uh, oil change and stuff and then we'll head out uh, to the dyno Today, let's see what this thing can do. As you all know, we go from ethanol to pump fuel, which is why we did all the cooling modifications. So hoping to get the same power out of the car. Um, I really like this air intake in the rear window. As you guys all know, I've said it before, I really like when the shape of the car still remains and that's absolutely enough opening because it's actually the same um, opening size as a Mark IV Supra has in the front bumper. So that's gonna be fine. And there, the air is gonna vent out nicely over there. So with a really safe um, pump fuel tune, we're on uh, 523 horsepower and 658 pound-feet at 4400 RPM. Very usable um, curve and for like a super safe tune we could probably get a little more horsepower, we could probably go over 600 but that would also mean that the car um, it's going to have more wear and tear because supercharger is of course also putting stress on the crankshaft It's a little bit different to have supercharged 600 horsepower versus supercharged turbo car um, And it's still an original BMW transmission and especially with superchargers with the torque coming in um, pretty pretty um, early in the range um, We uh, kind of want to take things easy with that stuff and drive first it's also driver related of course and the owner of this car um, is just looking for reliability and lots of seat time so better to stay like on the safe side and I think this is a really really good number um, for a car that's built this way it's a pretty good chassis um, so yeah so I'm kind of happy that we're on the same power level as uh, before but now on pump fuel and all the temperatures and everything is good and it's a very safe tune so happy with that
So very pleased that uh, despite a lot of the dyno runs and getting the oil really high temperature, our solution for uh, AN10 adapters on the M62, M60, you can just barely tell, it's difficult to tell. I can't get it in over there. Um, so our solution to turn that into dash 10, um, didn't leak or anything, super happy with that, bone dry. Now you can see the adapter that well, has the black holes over there. So I'm uh, really happy with that. As you can see, this was all really, really close, uh, but we're still able to reach um, the brake reservoirs. And that's where you can see the AN20 lines going in very close to the um, oil pressure sensor. And one big problem was, of course, as you guys can remember that we couldn't disconnect those silver lines without moving the engine. So, um, this is like the way it is, like it's still kind of good packaging. If you take a look at it, there's like four hydraulic hoses over there, because that's the only way to properly get um, an oil cooler on one of these motors. And um, yeah, that thing definitely is needed uh, when we're running the car on pump fuel. So I'm um, kind of happy with that. Uh, we had a problem on the dyno with um, the cam sensor. So cam sensor, replaced over there and also uh, we had an issue with um, O2 sensor so all that stuff solved it's not the easiest car to work on as you guys have seen but um, yeah happy with uh, how this thing turned out so with all the extra power the client was wise enough to let us upgrade the rear end so the BMW diesel stuff came out and we put in one of our quick changes and the main shaft is of course also upgraded because of that BMW diesel transmission so it needs to be a telescopic shaft but still one piece so that's definitely how i like it not the cheapest solution but that's how you get reliability there you can see the position of the diff this is the standard position where you don't have to cut too much from the floor and the axles with cv joints are really beefy so that should handle all the power we can throw at it uh, there you can see how we cut open the trunk and put the red uh, mesh in there as well that's the height of the quick change build it in and we also tidied up the wiring of course after the dyno and labeled the new switches so the car is ready to go i hope you guys like it let me know what you feel about it in the comments guys thank you so much for watching and all the comments and the subscriptions i really appreciate it um, gives me a lot of joy to make these videos for you guys and um, please share the channel it's um, really busy for me making all these videos and the drift week 5 is going to come up so you guys are naturally coming with me and i hope we're going to have a fantastic time